Hello everyone! Is the autofocus on the FS7 useless or can it be useful? I was very curious when I got my FS7 to see if the autofocus is actually that bad. Uh, many people who've reviewed the camera have basically come to the conclusion that it's useless. However, when I shot with my F3, there were certain situations that I wish that it had some kind of autofocus. Doesn't need to be the best. For instance, when I was filming myself, a lot of times I set up the camera, put something in place of me, pulled focus, started recording, and then when I got to the edit, I found out that I missed focus anyway. And when I do YouTube videos like this, I don't really care if sometimes the focus is a little bit off. What's most important for me is that I can get my message through. And when I got the camera, I smacked on a um, wide angle lens that had autofocus and just filmed myself in the window. And I could see that actually my face is in focus. Hey, that's a good start. And I ran around a little bit with it in uh, the apartment. Most of the time, what I wanted to be in focus was in focus. I had to put the FS7 through the test. So I set up a couple of scenarios, an interview, filming myself, and I tried the different settings. The FS7 basically has no autofocus settings at all. It has wide, center, and flexible spot. In this interview scenario, I just shot it in the wide setting. It's a little bit slow, but eventually the autofocus uh, picks me up. The wide shot is with the 16-35 G Master, and uh, the tight shot is with the 70-200 G Master. So we have real Sony lenses. And we're shooting at the 2.8 just to make the camera struggle a little bit. We're shooting in the uh, standard one picture profile. I also wanted to see if uh, it would be any difference shooting it in log compared to the more linear gamma in the standard one. Here I did a correction for you. Uh, it looks a little bit uh, crazy, but uh, we're gonna talk about S-Log in uh, the FS7 in another video. As you can see, it finds me in both the tight shot and in the wide shot. However, it's always hunting a little bit. But it doesn't focus on the wall or anything crazy like that. It still catches me, but it's like this little pulsating moment. This is a way more tricky situation. I'm gonna try to film my cat. Here it's stuck, but uh, as you can see, it takes a while for it to find what it's gonna focus on. It eventually sticks, but uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, autofocus for crucial documentary run and gun work. And here's another situation. The autofocus, it's stuck to the end of the door but it doesn't find the cat immediately. I'm speeding this picture up because eventually it finds the cat. But um, if you're a documentary style filmmaker, you know that the moment you're supposed to get here is wasted by this time. Now we're in the flexible spot mode and uh, the spot is right on my face. If I lean out, it will start to hunt. And when I go up again, it will find me. And if I put something in front of me in the box, it actually responds. Uh, however, I got mixed results with this. Here it finds it perfectly, but sometimes it is just dumb. Right now, I am using the autofocus of the FS7 and uh, as you can see, there is nothing in the background, it's only me to focus on. 
And in this situation, the camera doesn't need to struggle. It has contrast, my beard and my face. So this should probably look fine. However, uh, the big problem is that it's not sticky. It finds what it should focus on and then it hunts. So I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes, they don't stay in focus. It wanders a little bit like this all the time. But for me, doing this kind of YouTube videos, I don't care that much about it actually. It's all about getting the message through. And I would much rather have this kind of autofocus and then sometimes it acts a little bit weird instead of me having to put something here in front of the camera, focus on that and then cross my fingers and just hope it's the same focal plane, which it never is. Uh, so if you have a manual camera, you often need to stop it down and you need to be very thorough. But I like to make these kinds of videos kind of on the fly. I just want to set up the camera, talk about whatever I want to talk about, get it in the computer and then get it out there. So for me, I'm kind of happy with this. If it's like a make or break situation for you, you want something that you can film yourself using autofocus, then I think it's actually good enough. As I said before, it's not perfect, but you can do it. And I also use the autofocus for professional work. Um, I shoot a lot of talking heads and then I have one wide shot uh, to the front and I have one tighter shot from the side. And uh, the problem with shooting in the tighter shot is that people tend to move around a little bit. In the wide shot, that's not a problem. But in the tight shot, every little movement shifts the focus around. So I would much rather keep that camera on autofocus. It might hunt a little bit, but I know if they shift a little bit to the side, at least I know that eventually the autofocus will find them because then I can relax and focus on other things during these kind of shoots. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to follow me in my journey as a filmmaker, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep these kind of videos coming. Bye.